Hello, welcome back to the Spiders Web, and in this video we're going to be carrying on with our base sets for Vampire Hunters. And we have first off the Vampire Lord down here. There we are, that's the Vampire Lord. And we have the two Elder Vampires. But they're the final three that we're going to be doing in this uh, box. Today we are concentrating on Pete. So here we go. What we're going to do with Pete. Now he's what not one of the players that actually goes round the um or it's not one of the characters that goes round the um the game. He's not one of the playable characters. He's basically shall we say a tool that they use. Um, he holds the um, winch uh, that, <coughs> excuse me, that attaches to the harpoon, which they can use to spike a vampire and then drag them out using the winch into daylight and only during daylight hours. It, can't, it cannot be used during nighttime phase. So. As you can see, he's virtually bare chested. He's uh, the only thing he's wearing on his upper body is the harness for the winch, wearing jeans, knee pad boots, and that's your lot for him. So there's plenty of flesh going on with this. So I think what we will do is use one of our new sets of paint for him. Burberian flesh. Now these are, as we say, um, army painter paints, so they do need a good shake. Really, I should put a uh, put an agitator in the bottle, but I haven't got any yet, so I'm just going to have to make do with what I do have. So I'm going to add some of the Burberian flesh. To the palette, pop it in, we'll get our brush, a little bit damp, into the paint, and onto the mini. Now, this is quite thin, but because as I say, I have got an agitator. We've really taken the tub off, or the, the, not the tub, the little spout off this, um, and going into the paint with a some form of stick in order to mix the paint and the medium together a lot better. But you know, this is not quite thin, so it will do for the. Um, purpose that we need it for at the moment. If we need it to go on thicker, for whatever reason, um, I may have to do that. In fact, I think it might be an idea doing that anyway. But not yet. Hmm. Okay, so that is part of the harness stra uh, strapping, can shall we say? It certainly doesn't look like a a, a, a burr blower back. It looks like it's some form of padding that's on his lower back to stop, obviously, some damage occurring to his back for carrying such a heavy weight. So, I'm not painting that flesh covered. Um, and we're just going to plow through and paint, as I say, all the flesh. Everywhere on this, this flesh covered will be painted in this colour. Um, now, as usual, I'm not really getting too caught up at the moment with making sure I paint sort of like in between the lines. 
if I go on to any other area that's fine at the moment because I've not painted anywhere else but obviously when the time comes that I have painted things I'll be a lot more careful with this but I just want to make sure that all the flesh is covered at the moment so that's the priority um, and getting and making sure that all the grey where the flesh is is covered over because the one thing I don't want to have is some of the grey showing through on the flesh area because that's not going to look right which is why I'm not too fussed of going over um, surrounding areas just so long as the flesh is all painted um, it's not very good when you get so far through the mini and you actually see that there's an area that you should have painted in the flesh colour that you didn't manage to catch and it's just primer <coughs> so as I'm making sure I've got right up to and over the edges when you're doing flesh is handy because the flesh obviously is underneath the clothing so you don't want it looking as though the flesh just goes to the clothing which is what could happen if you're not careful on this but as we said we take our time we make sure everything is covered And I think we've gone a bit too far there with that. And make sure I get his knuckles there. There's a little bit of flashing going on here, which I've decided not to remove because it's on the knuckles and I don't want to do any damage to the mini itself. So I've decided not to do that. If it looks as though it's standing out of it, I might put some gold or something on it. Just gold or silver to make it look as though it's got a few rings on. But I doubt whether it would I'd need to do that. There we are. I'm just going to alter the camera slightly. There we are. That looks as though I'm covering everything. So I think I have an I've got a feeling that I've gone off camera a few times with this because as I've been painting I can feel me going up. Um, so I'm not using my crafting area as yet. I'm actually on a little crafting table, and um, because of which um, I'm fairly low down, and uh, I haven't actually got the camera positioned in a way that suits as it were right next thing while I'm waiting for the flesh to dry I'm going to go in with some war clock bronze and go over the winch <coughs> <coughs> so a little bit of this on the camp on the pallet there's not much of this left in the pot so I'm going to have to get some more next week um, This bush is a little dried up for some, some reason. Um, I need to give it a, a good clean effect. On the, this brush itself is a, <coughs> a brush that I only use for putting paint from the pot into um, onto the palette. So I'm not really overly fussed about it drying up. It's just transferring from one place to another. I'm not using it for actually applying paint to the uh, mini. So I decided I was going to do this to give the flesh time to dry and I just realised <laughs> it is actually holding part of the metal anyway so I'm going to just do as far away from that bit as I can for the moment. 
Um, because obviously the last thing I want to do is be painting over the flesh that I've only just done with metal. Um, now, I do have a bit of a stray hair on this brush, so I'm going to try and um, control that by, as I load the brush with paint, twist the brush through the paint, and hopefully that will flatten out the um, the brush. And I'm just trying to get the paint into these little recessed areas here just like so simple and again make sure all the areas that you want to be metal is metal I was painted in this color rather Even the the rope that is attached to this winch, I'm going to do as a metal, like a steel rope kind of thing. Because I think that's what it would be. Um, I don't think it will be a like a nylon rope or a hemp rope or anything like that. I think it will be um, an actual steel rope. Um, I'm just going and got metallic paint on my flesh toner but it doesn't matter at the moment I'm going to have to go with the flesh tone anyway um, because it's not a strong that's the word I'm looking for it's not a, a strong coverage and this as yet um, so that's that done what I need to do now is down here is the also the steel rope I'm just going to add covering here as the rope goes down his leg and attaches itself to the harpoon with a very big loop and knot onto the loop of the harpoon and then the harpoon can be done and again this is not the final colour we're just doing base colours at the moment um, <coughs> So we'll be coming back later on to um, highlight this and give it its actual colour. We're not going to be washing the metal areas. So I don't have any of the, because Games Workshop now brought out a gloss wash. <coughs> um, the only washes I've got are matte wash. And when I use those on the metallics, it looks not good. So I won't be using those. <coughs> oh, there we are. So that's the winch done. I'm going to go back into the flesh tone now. I want to try and make sure that I've got the uh, flesh. Oops, the uh, postman has just arrived. As you can tell, or the rattle will be coming through the letterbox. Um, so I want to, as I said, make sure I've got a good, strong base coat, a solid colour. The base coat. Um, oops, a little bit too much paint on the brush there. I don't want it. Um, covering too much and 
again the areas where I haven't painted yet are fur game as it were to go over with the flesh but when it comes down to getting anywhere near that winch or any of the metal areas I'm trying to avoid going out shall we say out of the lines um, because that's not what we want to do it's okay being a little curless shall we say over the base or the primer but it's not okay to be curless around other areas that you've already painted accidents will happen however so if you do accidentally get some of the paint on um, areas that you have already painted you know don't lose sleep over it it will always be corrected in time as long as you just make sure you realize that it needs correcting and adjusting and you don't just leave it there won't be a problem painting no matter whether it's minis or pictures it's just an exercise in adjustments I've said it before I'll say it again we're just making constant adjustments to everything we do so there we are he's got his <coughs> flesh tone done it's a much more solid color now <coughs> and because of that we can move on to our next step <coughs> um, what I'm also going to do is move my water pot it's out of the way there so I'm just going to move it down here so hopefully um, I can get at it easier um, there we go now next job I'm thinking for the harness itself, I want like a, a nice reddish leathery colour. There again, we may want a nice blackish leathery colour. Hmm, not decided as yet. Tell you what, let's do the let's do his trousers first of all. Um, I'm going to give him khaki coloured trousers. Um, give it a paint, and we're going with castell and green. <coughs> <clears throat> so add some of that to our palette and then off camera when I've done with this I can then um, get the lid off the uh, my painter one <clears throat> and uh, see what's going on inside <clears throat> so, as we said, it's these trousers. And all these trousers get coated in this. Try and get as close as we can, but not on to that steel rope. done. Next job is um, the boots and these areas. Also the the harness 
for the um, for the winch and oops I've just missed a little bit of the winch well, I'm not sure whether I've missed a bit or rubbed it off as I've been painting something else <coughs> I've missed a little bit there and a little bit down here as well that's the trick just keep looking at it to see where or if there is anywhere that hasn't been covered properly if there is go don't go over it if there isn't don't worry you've done a good job if you find that there isn't and you've got everything covered well done to you because it's not very often that that kind of thing can happen <laughs> at least in my in my experience um, you've got more chance of painting it and then realizing the areas that you've missed than there is a painting it and then realizing or then looking at it and saying yep yeah, I've got everything everything is ex on the paint is exactly where I want it and it's looking awesome you know looking awesome is the very final thing it only looks awesome when you are completely happy with it so no matter how well it is painted or how skillful uh, your level of painting is if you're happy with it and you think it's finished then that's when it's finished so there we are right we are looking at the boots and these little uh, knee pads um, also do these areas as well <coughs> uh, what can I do then in I wonder uh, let's go back to my um, painter once more and the colour I've picked for these is called Dark Stone very similar to Eshin Grey I believe so I'll just pop some of that out don't need a great deal <coughs> Dampen the brush, a little bit of a wipe, and into the paint. And we will go over the boots. I think I might add a little colour into this as well for the pads, for the knee pads and <coughs> his, uh, for want of a better phrase, his wedding tackle protector um, cod piece, whatever you would like to call it the bit that is protecting his meat and two veg we shall do them both with a different shade of this colour I'm happy at the moment with them for the boots but I'm going to add I'm going to get some of that put it over here and add some of the green that we've already used and some of the flesh tone that we've used as well just to change it we'll add some more of the flesh tone and a little bit more green a bit more too green in that I think now so we'll add some of the um, the greyish colour that we use for the boots what's it called again? I can't remember Dirt Stone A little more than that I think. We don't want it too dark and we don't want it too greeny but let's see how that looks against the oh, yeah. well, it's different enough from the uh, boots 
and it's totally different from to the um, what you call it the um, oh dear lord to the cast iron green if we're looking for fruit the um, that we use for his pants I'm gonna over that like that there's a little bit of metallic colour because there's a metal loop there and a metal loop there I don't want to be doing those yet because uh, I'm just going to go over that with a like a, a silvery colour later on I don't need to go over it with anything at the moment because I've gone over it with this colour which will act as quite a, an adequate base coat for, for it <clears throat> but what I do want to do is make sure that I've got all of this area that I need covering covered. There we go. Well, that's not done. I'm not doing the straps in this colour. I'm going to do them slightly different. I'm going to add a little bit of red into this mix. <clears throat> for that, but I want to separate some of that first of all because I don't want um because I want to use some for uh highlighting later on. <coughs> but for this strap here and the straps that are going around the leg and the straps on the harness, I'm going to use a little bit of Doomball Brown and a little bit in that of Evil Sun Scarlet. Mix these two colours together. So add the Evil Sun Scarlet. There. We don't need a great deal of that because great me. End of my brush is just falling off my water pot. I'll dig it out after. Can't be bothered now. I'll use a different brush for sticking it on the palette. Um I'll use this scrubby, scabby old uh, dry brush. I'm saying scabby old dry brush, that's one of my new ones. Oh well. Uh, and we'll add some of the Doomball Brown onto the palette as well. Using quite a bit of that. So, first off, a little bit of the red. Into that, some of the Doomball Brown. Now, add a little bit of this green in there as well. Not much, just a little bit. And there we are, that will do. And we'll use that for the strapping, or the, yeah, the strapping on the, um, the winch. I'm going into the Doomball Brown with this and this bit is going to be for this central panel I'm 
You know, it isn't exactly. You no, know, it is a million miles away in colour, but it is a slightly different shade, which is what I'm looking for. It will be highlighted slightly different as well. <coughs> um, I'm also going to do this little strap here in this colour. I've decided just to make a little change. I was going to do it in the same colour as doing the straps for the uh, knee protectors, but change your mind. Now, a little bit of red, and then some of this colour we mixed into that red. I put a bit too much red there, to be honest. That's more the colour I want. So and that's the colour I will use. Um, if you wonder what that noise is in the background, that little ticking kind of noise, uh, Riz is having a drink of water. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's what's going on. <laughs> and just touch here and there. We don't want a great deal of this because there's not a lot of these strapping insides. But we just want to make sure it's there so it doesn't look too weird. And I uh, want to make it look as though these things are actually attached to something. There we are. Just noticing I've missed a couple of spots, but I can't get out. It's not that I've missed a couple of spots, I just couldn't get at it with this particular brush. I'm going to have to change brushes to a thinner brush. A little bit of water on it. And into the mix that we did for the harness. And we'll just... down here and add in the colours that we need underneath here and so again we don't want it looking odd and there we are. and that's that done I just want to use some of the Doomball Brown now To the again wrong paint <laughs> into this colour and just go over that bit um, and again there's some areas that we've not been able to catch because of the thickness of the brush Just want to nip into the uh, Caliban. What is it? Castell and Green. Because there's a bit of the grey showing here from the primer. And there we are. And I'll just tidy up some of the areas that we need to from the and that's basically all we're doing. <coughs> so what we're going to do as well as his mohawk, let's give him a bright red one, shall we? There we are. Give him a bright red mohawk. And then... When we come down to washing, it will change the colour slightly, and we can highlight it to give it the colour that we want it. 
we do want a, a reddish colour for his hair just for the sake of humour value if nothing else just to make him stand out a little bit because he's not, as I say, he's not one of the player characters I just don't want him shrinking into the background uh, if he's there I'd like to have him noticeable so that is what we have for this fella <clears throat> so washes now I think for the trousers we're going to do a little more army painter and we're going to go with a green tone I just want to try as much as I can with this army painter because it's new to me so I'll add some of that onto the palette and we will apply it now um, and that's going over everything here we're not giving the um, the brown any of this the brown strapping I'm just trying to be careful where we put it but all over the jeans all well I'm saying jeans all over his pants is going to get a coating of this except obviously for the the strapping that we're using um, so just I'm just applying it carefully And all of this will, as a wash does, it will seep into the crevices and all the creases and folds and make it stand out and be darker. And then we can highlight over the top of that and see where all the highlights go. And that's the way a wash will work. There we are. So that's the green wash for the trousers. Next for the flesh tone, we're going to go with uh, one of the GW ones because yeah, we can. Um, well, we can when I find this anyway. Let's put it that way. Uh, there we are. Got it. Reichlin flesh shade. He's going to be our paint of choice for the browns and the flesh so let's go over this um, and I said on the browns on the flesh and the hair the red and the hair is going to be this color we are not going to be going over anywhere else with this Um, so we're not touching the metal areas because that's going to take the shine and the metallic look away from the metal um, I have done it before and then I've realised how it looks and I'm not a big fan of it anymore so that's why I don't use washes now on metallic paintwork um, not to say that you can't it's just I don't like I'm getting to um, follow what I'm thinking as it were if I don't like the look of something I stop doing it uh, so don't let it pull up too much in the crevices because we don't want to lose any detail but we do want to let it pull so just give it a look, just look over it and see how it looks. If it is peeling in crevices, fine. If it's not, then make sure it does. And if it's peeling too much, then 
if we don't wipe. Because when it peels too much, it doesn't look good. Oh yeah. I'm going over the boots with this as well. Um, I'll do the rock that he's perched on. And when I come down to doing the base, I'm not interested in that as yet. But there we are, that's Pete so far. And that's the end of this part of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, when we come back, we will be um, giving him a good highlighting. And uh, I have to go and retrieve the uh, brush part of my um, thingy brush here. So I'll dig that out, give this a chance to dry. When we come back, we start on the highlighting. So I will see you then. Until then, take care, God bless, and bye.